Hello and welcome. I'm Exolite and this is my channel. Today we're going to talk about James McGrogan, a 39 year old man, a doctor, who died mysteriously in 2014 in a United States national forest. Dr. James Jim McGrogan went missing on Friday, March 14, 2014, during a hiking trip near Vail, Colorado. Vail is a small town at the base of Vail Mountain and is the center of a huge and famous ski resort. There is no doubt that at least those of you in the United States have heard of Vail, Colorado. It is set within the White River National Forest. Dr. McGrogan was reportedly excited about starting a new job when he returned home to Indiana from where he had been in Wisconsin to work in the emergency room of St. Joseph Regional Medical Center in Mishawaka. On the morning of the 14th, at about 8.30 a.m., Jim and three hiking companions left on the nine-mile hike to the Eisman Hut. At the time, there was a lot of snow in the area, several feet deep in some areas. Now, there are two main routes from Vail to the Eisman Hut. One via Spraddle Creek and a more westerly route via Red Sandstone Creek. It is not clear which route the group took that day, but both were used quite heavily and were well marked with compacted snow. At about 10 a.m., with the hiker still about five miles away from the hut, the group decided to stop and take a rest. According to Jim's friends, Jim decided to hike on ahead of them and they expected to catch up with him along the way. And I don't know how many times I've told these stories. And one of the common threads is that a group of people traveling together in some manner stop for a rest and one of their companions either heads on ahead of them or decides to turn around and go back to base camp. It seems to be a very, very common thread. My suggestion to you would be, if you go hiking with a group, never separate, especially going by yourself. It, it just seems that it's particularly unsafe. So Jim left, he went on ahead of the others, and he was never seen alive again. When the rest of the group reached the Eisman hut, it was late in the afternoon on March 14th, and there was no sign of Jim. By 5.30, they had notified the Vail Department of Public Safety, and subsequently, the Eagle Valley Sheriff's Department and rescue was started over an 18 square mile. Now this particular case isn't one of those cases where somebody wanders off and they are not prepared for an emergency. According to Jim's companions and the Eagle County Sheriff's Office, Jim's pack was full of food, water, he brought a working cell phone, including an extra battery. He brought medical supplies, a sleeping bag, avalanche beacon, a GPS, and extra warm clothing. He was also carrying a split snowboard, which is a snowboard that divides lengthwise, plus the skins and equipment, and was wearing the boots that went with that board. McGrogan's cell phone pinged once the day after he went missing, but strangely after that, it was dead, never having been used. Over the next three days, teams of searchers on foot, on snowmobiles, there were three helicopters used, searched this area for Jim, and there was no sign of him. Remember I said that the trails had compacted snow. There were 
no signs that anybody had even walked off of a trail into the snow that was lining the trail. Nothing. By Tuesday, March 18th, bad weather forced the search to be suspended. And with these cases, another coincidence, another thread that links them is oftentimes bad weather will bring the search to a halt, whether that be a thunderstorm or a huge snowfall. All in all, Cruz had spent a combined 1,000 hours searching for Dr. McGrogan. A five-day search failed to find any sign of him. 20 days later, his body was found by a group of backcountry skiers about four and a half miles from the trail on April 3rd, near the Booth Falls area, way to the east of the Eisman hut. The reporting party told authorities that he and two others were skiing the Booth Falls area when they located the dead body in an ice fall below the Booth Falls, laying on top of a sheet of ice. What an ice fall is, is when a waterfall, it's so cold that a waterfall freezes in the shape of a waterfall. Um, even where I live in Texas, we have a waterfall that will freeze. And it's a strange and amazing sight to see. He was found wearing his helmet, but had no coat on. He had no gloves. And very strangely, he had no boots. In his backpack was his cell phone. And the area he was found had good cell phone reception. Jim's snowboard was also found nearby, but his boots were never located. On April 7th, 2014, the Eagle County Coroner, Kara Bettis, reported that James McGrogan died of multiple injuries, including head trauma, an injury to the left side of his chest, and a broken femur. His death was ruled an accident. The authority said that he had fallen off a ridge overlooking the falls. So what happened to Dr. Jim McGrogan on March 14, 2014? He hiked 12 to 14 miles across the backcountry in the snow that was in some places eight feet deep and then apparently lost his boots. Did he succumb to hypothermia and begin to undress? Why didn't he use his working cell phone? Why didn't he use his GPS tracker? Both of which were fully functional. Why did he become separated from his hiking group and decide to leave? on his own to never be seen again. And considering that the path was fully laid out in front of him and there were no signs that anybody had left that path, no snow interrupted, no snow bothered, no snow where there was footprints leaving that trail. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that from air, they couldn't see that trail and see that somebody had left it and started hiking across it. It doesn't make sense that somebody would be hiking through eight feet of snow. It's impossible. It's impossible to go hiking in snow deeper than you are tall. So, what happened to Jim? How did he get there? How did he mysteriously land there with no signs that he hiked anywhere? 
and his boots never being found. We might never know. So it's likely that this will remain one of the mysterious missing person cases of the U.S. National Parks. Thank you for coming to my channel. If you enjoy my content, please take a moment and subscribe. Also, if you could, it really helps my channel if you give it a big thumbs up. And click that bell so you can be notified when I put up new content. And if you would like to support this channel, please consider becoming a Patreon member. My link is below.